I was nervous at these, and I don't really like, I didn't really tell anyone that I did this, but I did these local tournaments and I was like scared to death. Welcome to another installment of the Grappling Hour. My name is Rafa Sparza. We are continuing on with our look at many of the ADCC trials winners. Today's a special one because longtime friend of the show, the very nice, the very kind, and the very savage Keith Kikorian will be joining us in a few minutes. But before we get to that, I just wanted to say we have a big announcement coming up here on the show. So if you've seen me interview people like Keith, and I'm sure you have, this is not the first time I've interviewed him, and it's definitely not the last time I will interview him. But uh, I'm sure you get to see that we always do the big names in jiu-jitsu. And we always do about hour-long interviews with these guys to talk about their stories, their journeys, their struggles, their mental capacity to win some of these major tournaments. So coming up, we have an announcement here on the show, which is that we are going to be doing a subscriber-based version of the show. Now, granted, there's always going to be a free component. That is something that is very important to me. But for those subscribers who want to become part of the Grappling Hour family and know and love what we do here on the show and support us, uh, we would love it if you guys were to sign up to become early access subscribers. That means you'll get the interviews before anybody else. So all you have to do to find out more information is just go down this uh, link right down here, somewhere in this region, click on that link and then put yourself on a mailing list and you can get more information about it. Because here's the thing, if you see the interview today and you like what you see today, as well as the other interviews we still have lined up for this week and next week, we would love it if you support us so that we continue building this show to something even bigger. All right, that's enough of the pitch. We'd love it if you do it. And yes, there still will be a free component because that is important to me. But today's show, Keith Kikorian, so many good insights. This show doesn't even have an ending. Normally, there's me talking at the very end. We're not even doing that. Keith was on a roll talking about his journey, and we know how long that journey has taken him to get to this special spot. So I don't want to waste any more of your time. Let's go see what Keith Kikorian has to say. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another installment of Grappling Hour. We are doing our best to get your ADCC trials winners. And, you know, we have most of them. And here's what's nice, is uh, as we talk to many of them, we meet some new people, and then there are great moments for some friends of the show. Now, some of them are very long-time friends of the show, and uh, it's hard not to be a little biased when you're sitting at home and watching these things, because we have a lot of friends in a lot of different weight classes. So when it really comes down to the end, you gotta ask yourself, hey man, uh, I don't, I don't want to get too biased here because, uh, these people might not come on the show, but here was one person you could openly root for. And I think most people kind of understand, especially us here on the show. He is close to us. He's been a longtime friend of our show. Uh, he is beloved in the community and you could see that there was a whole groundswell of emotion and elation from so many people in the jiu-jitsu community when they saw him win ADCC trials. He has taken, famously, ADCC trials finals and second place for three times in a row. But it turns out it's not the third time that's a charm. It's the motherfucking fourth time. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the show your good friend and mine, one young Keith Kikorian. Keith, how are you doing, sir? <laughs> good, man. Thanks for the kind words. Listen, man, it's easy to make those kind words when you put in hard work. And I wrote something to the effect, and I feel it is true, which is sometimes in jiu-jitsu, the hard workers don't always get recognized. And you know that statistically, yeah, hard work is good. We should be really, really trying to work hard. But this is a 1% sort of thing. So there are a lot of hard workers who necessarily don't always 
win, especially when it comes to this. But I think your consistency uh, speaks for itself. So it was wonderful to see you and tack it just from a narrative standpoint. But of course, today we're talking with you. So how did it feel, man? What did it feel to you to break through and finally win the trials? And it felt so good, dude. Um, I just, I hate having to, uh, I hate having to do those trials <laughs> because like <laughs> they're so grueling and so much can go wrong and, and everyone's hungry and, uh, you know, literally, <laughs> um, like, uh, especially at 66, um, it's, uh, it's a really, really grueling tournament and like making it so close so many times just like only means that you have to do it again. <laughs> um, but winning it, uh, you know, is just a good thing because, well, I guess this was the last, uh, last North American trials, but like, uh, it still meant that I don't have to really worry about it. Like I'm, just, I'm in and, and I can, I can you know, kind of re- like relax knowing that, um, I don't have, to, you know, find for an invite and I don't have to maybe go to the European trials. You know, I don't think many people know that, but that, that has always been an option. I could go to the European trials um, and do those. I have a great passport, so um, I could have done those, uh, you know, but I always wanted to test myself in the hardest, in my opinion, the hardest trials. Um, and, man, it's just, you know, it was really gratifying knowing the the path that I had to take there, not even just, you know, from the, the trials before, but just that day uh, or that weekend I had just, like, a uh, tough guy after tough guy. Um and, you know, what I noticed uh, a lot of times was the guy who wins the trials isn't the guy who has, like, the easiest route where you're like, eh, man, he kind of went against a bunch of guys that, like, you know, he was supposed to be, you know, uh, leading up to the finals or, or, you know, all the way through the tournament. This is a bunch of guys that I was like, any of these guys could definitely beat me. Um, and uh, I kind of liked that, that it went down like that. Uh, I mean, um, even if I, you know... Um, even though I maybe hadn't won, it was would have just been like, well, man, that that was like, you know, that was a, it was definitely the toughest possible road, you know, and, and win or lose, like, you know, that's that's who you should, who you should strive to, to to beat, you know, all the all the tough guys. So it was great, man. It was gratifying. It was it was um, just like such a such a cool feeling, um, uh, really, like a, a great relief too, you know, <laughs> um, knowing that I didn't have to, like I said, didn't have to find for an invite. Didn't have to go do the European trials. Didn't have to go through all that. It was just, I was in. That was so cool. I love that you do your research and your homework enough to know, ah, in my back pocket, there's always Euros, and I will go there uh, to make that happen. And again, you're right. It does quell some of the nerves. This will be your second ADCC, but the last time it wasn't an assured thing. You know, you got the invite at the last minute to replace for an injury, and then as a result of that, you know, you know that anxiety of, man, I'm not in, I want to be in, and I'm so close. So for me, it was like, man, now it, it resets the clock. You know, obviously you can take a little bit of a breather, but now you know the training is with a specific goal of, hey, come to September, you're in the dance. So now you have a goal, a new goal post to work toward. One thing I want to ask, this is another thing I commented on, and a lot of what I try to do is I try to put things in context from my perspective. So I would love to get your perspective on this because it's easy to let those losses or let those setbacks define you. What do you attribute to your mentality that helped you overcome that hurdle? Because you and Taggett share that in your journeys for all of those finals and getting this result this time. But I was curious what helped you or what are things mentally that got you to that place to stay focused and on the task at hand? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. Um, uh, and it's, you know, it's funny you ask that um, now because it, you asked me that a while ago. Like, I mean, after I, after I used to lo- like when I would lose, um, you know, just not even at the trials, but just, you know, whatever, I would kind of like walk around feeling like a failure for a long time after, you know, um, even if I won a, a tournament or something after that, I would still feel like I would that, that failure or that like, the uh, like loss would like stay with me for a long time. 
And I feel like that holds me back in a lot of ways. You know, it takes a lot of, it kills your morale. It takes a lot of enthusiasm out of training. Um, you know, it like, uh, maybe pushes you, maybe motivates you, but it also, I think, hurts you in a lot of ways and it can really just hurt your quality of life. And I stopped, man, honestly, I stopped. Um, after the, you know, man, it was like after that, that Kennedy loss that I had in the middle, middle of last year, I felt like such a failure. I felt like such a loser. Um, and you know, and I, uh, I, I think I even like hopped into a local absolute tournament and I lost like a ref's decision to this like big ass, like, you know, uh, wrestler dude. And I just remember feeling like, wow, I can't even, I can't beat the elite. I can't beat Kennedy. I can't even beat like local dude, you know? And I, was, I remember feeling like such a failure and it wouldn't have mattered if I had won anything after that, you know, it wouldn't have mattered like, you know, what I had done. Um, but then, uh, I kind of made like so just some mental adjustments. Like I, I left, you know, when I left Jersey and I went down to, to Florida and I just, I used like that, that whole trip to just clear my mind and like, and really think about things and process things. And, um, you know, I, and I, I did actually like just like enter some local tournaments just to like build my confidence a little, you know, I was, I was so low confidence, Mr. Sparza. I like cannot even describe it. I was nervous at these and I don't really like I didn't really tell anyone that I did this but I did these local tournaments and I was like scared to death to go against these white belts and blue belts like <laughs> I was so scared and uh like nervous and not confident at all um because I still felt like I was a loser you know I felt like I was like like I just had nothing going for me it was like this this terrible feeling um and uh and you know, man, and then I, I just kind of like was telling myself, no, dude, you're not a loser. Like you probably work harder than the average person, um, you know, at, at anything, you know what I mean? Um, and I, and I have to believe that because I know it's true. I, 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 I truly have put in more time into this than anyone has probably, you know, put into anything that they've ever done in their life, you know? Um, and, uh, and then, you know, win or lose after that, I, I think my, my performances, um, didn't matter to me. Like I, you know, I, I lost to, to Cole Bate and, you know, I was sad for a little bit, but I was, I was just proud of myself for even like, you know, attempting, you know, a thing that, you know, a lot of people probably are scared of, you know, uh, I lost to Cade Rotolo, but I was proud of myself for even, you know, making it to that match and, and, and you know, um, and, you know, just uh, trying my hardest and just like the the effort that I was like putting into this stuff, like greatly outweighed the result, you know. And um, now, man, I just I just don't feel I don't walk around, you know, with that feeling of, of failure, you know. I mean, those are two pretty bad losses I took last year. I mean, you know, um, uh, you know, I took the Kennedy loss and that local loss too. And those are some, you know, decent, you know, not, not amazing losses to feel about or to, to look at. Um, but like in my mind, it was just all about the effort, you know, and it was all about the, the work that I put into that and just like the mental shift that I go from like feeling like, like a total loser, you know, just in my daily life and just feeling like, man, who, who cares, who cares like what, you know, some result, jujitsu result, you know, says, um, on paper, like, you know who you are and you know how hard you work and, 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 um, and I think that's really all that matters. And. I kind of took that energy in, into this weekend, you know, or the last weekend, I suppose. I was just like, man, I'm, you know, I'm myself. I don't care that, I don't care that there's a, you know, if there's a number next to my name. I don't care if there's not. I don't care if there's a belt rank attached to my um, name, you know, whatever. It's, you know, I know who I am and I'm really secure in that. And um, I think that just has really helped me um, in, you know, day-to-day -day training and competition just in my personal life, like, you know, I'm just, I'm just much more, ha I'm much happier, I'm much more enthusiastic, I enjoy every training session, you know, you know, getting beat up, not getting beat up, you know, doing well, not doing well, being tired, being full of energy, like, I just enjoy it all, you know, um, uh, and it's just, man, it's made a huge, huge difference. What you're describing sounds like growth, and I think it's really refreshing to hear you come to those realizations and a lot of that stuff that you have carried is not dissimilar from what other people carry as they take on responsibilities or they face certain challenges in their life. So it's so refreshing to hear that you were able to 
find uh, kind of the beauty in what it is that you're doing. Like you found an appreciation for your own work ethic and said like, hey, you know, there's something of value here. And a lot of people always talk about betting on yourself and learning to do that sort of a thing. You found not only the ability to bet on yourself, but to believe in yourself in some of the hardest times. So what you're describing to me sounds like a, a good sense of resilience. And I, I tell you this, not as uh, somebody who wants to, you know, blow smoke up your ass. It's more of a thing of that's hard to do. And in competition, it can really set you back. So finding that that nice uh, level is really important. And, and it shows. And I want to point out one thing that I think really helps, which is I don't know how much people pay attention to you in the moments after you compete with somebody. But I think that perspective you've had makes you the ideal person after a match. Because, yeah, you might have a slight moment of, man, I feel really proud of myself. But you treat every one of your competitors like first-class individuals. And I think that is something that we observe because you, you've been there. And I think that is something that you sometimes share with those athletes. Um, is that something that you do intentionally? Like, is that something that just happens? Like, what happens there because you're in the moment and you see something out of somebody else after you just competed with them and you're the person that beat them. So what is going through your mind when that happens? Yeah, basically what you said, man, I, I really do. Um, and I've heard, I've heard uh, other people talk about this um, in you know, other contexts too, but like, you know, we are all kind of in this together. Like, you know, um, we've been on both ends. We know how it feels both ways. Um, and you know, uh, I I always try to make sure my opponent knows um, that uh, I don't know that I have like a, like a lot of respect for them, you know, and a lot of love. And like, yeah, it's, I'm you know just as competitive as the next guy. But I, I truly I wish everyone could win, dude. Like I I wish there was a way <laughs> to just you know that 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 all of us could win because like I just how can you how can you not respect someone who's like trying to achieve the same thing you are and working just as hard as you and and you know because we know how 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 difficult this this thing is you know and um this dream that we're chasing is glamorous and it's not um you know uh like all that uh rewarding in a lot of ways but it's like so but it means so much to us and we still despite that we like still push so hard to, uh, to achieve it and um man i mean this was definitely like you know, uh, after, uh, I guess the semis and the finals, like the most like excited and of this past season of one, like it was the most excited I've been off, off win a long time just because of like, the, the, like what they, um, like, you know, stage opponents, what they mean, what they represent, you know? Um, but I like definitely, I hope that, um, I like, show that like, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's also, um, it's out of respect to my books too. I'm very happy. Um, because I respect them so much, you know. Um, and yeah, I do definitely have like a lot of empathy for the, the feelings that they have after a loss, you know, because obviously I've been there. <laughs> um, but uh, um, but yeah, like I said, we're, we're kind of we're, we're all in this together. We've all we've all felt a lot of the same feelings before, you know. And I have a lot of I have a lot of a lot of empathy. <laughs> and you should, man. Uh, it's kind of the ideal version you hope in most cases. A lot of people don't necessarily take that extra step. Uh, and I think it shows that you are turning uh, into a good elder statesman within the community, which is weird to say because you're still young as shit to me. But, you know, you've been competing and doing jiu-jitsu for such a long time. You obviously are now making your way into OG status. It's just the small touch of doing that will have longer implications and longer uh, reach than I think you know it now. So even though it seems like the right short-term thing to do, long-term it does a much better service for the sport in terms of how we see future competitors do it because you learned it from somebody and I'm sure you observed that was the way to conduct yourself 
So there are people who came before you who did it. And every time somebody pays that forward, I think that, okay, the next generation is going to be pretty good because they're going to say that, you know, they saw you or somebody like you do that. So um, it, it's not without reason to comment on it. I would like to ask, you know, I obviously talked about the mentality. Uh, I did want to know, did gushers play a role and should we be testing those because apparently ADCC, it's anything goes. So yeah, I just want to know. I guess this is uh, for my own personal when we roll next. Am I getting USADA to test your supply when we roll again? <laughs> Man, yeah, I was really uh, I was really hoping we had gushers on hand post-match, um, <laughs> uh, but couldn't make it happen. Uh, it's so funny, yeah. Uh, Josh uh, Leduke, he was like telling me, "Man, we could we could make this gusher sponsorship happen." And uh, <laughs> and um, you know, I'm thinking to myself, uh, like that sounds that sounds pretty great, but you know, I don't want to sell out. I'd like to keep the you know my relationship with this thing. So here now, I, I uh, yeah, I um. Hey, listen, dude. If Wiltsy can get Panda Express on board, there's no reason you can't have a nice little Gushers logo on your rash guard as you're competing at ADCC because it's right. gonna have a lot of eyeballs there, sir. It would be sweet, man. I I, I could maybe push for that, um, but uh, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it shakes out. I, I definitely I can't even go anywhere near Gushers when I'm getting 45 <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, for. <laughs> a long time before but um but after i definitely had i definitely had a few boxes i'm sure you did and uh, when you say a few boxes you know i don't know if you understand how old people do this when i buy sweets <laughs> that box is here for like a month so like <laughs> it's hard for me not to listen your metabolism still works i know you have to cut i know it's not fun but you know what also isn't fun growing up and being an adult so when people like you are eating two sets of ice cream sandwiches in front of me and then being like, what's the issue? I'm like, bro, this one ice cream sandwich is going to fuck me up for the rest of the week as it is. Like, I'm going to have to train so much just to burn this off. Yes, that was fun. That was yes, fun, by the yes, way. Yes. That, that was a, yeah, that was a good trip. Um, uh, uh, for anyone curious, yeah, it was, it was Milky Buns, actually, from after. <laughs> I, listen, like the dude, they're not sponsoring me, so I don't have to say exactly what it is. The minute they sponsor me, I'll tell people exactly what it is and how delicious <laughs> it is. But until then, it just gets a passing <laughs> reference. Keith, yeah. let's talk a little bit about prep because I know you to be somebody who takes things very seriously. Uh, I want to get into your camp. Um, I would love to know what adjustments were you making and, and when did you really, I know ADCC is always on your mindset, but like when would you consider the beginning of the camp for this particular experience? Yeah, I mean, definitely like it's just such a year round thing, like the prep for ADCC. Um, but the camp specifically started in Florida. It started probably, let's say like two or three months before um, and initially, um, I was in really bad shape. I was, I had some injuries, um, just, uh, like, you know, my body recovering from the couple weight cuts to 45 that I did last, um, like end of last year. Um, so I was like really in the process of just like kind of, uh, um, slow or not slow drilling, but just like a slower pace training, um, lots of drilling, uh, lots of, um, uh, like low impact, um, kind of like strength training and stuff. Not low impact. It was, it was actually, it was, um, it was like, you know, heavy weights and, and mm -hmm. stuff, but, um, just, uh, just, you know, more, more attention on that and less like hard training. So I didn't do too much hard training until about a month before, um, you know, right as I was leaving Florida, John came in, Colmes, um, he came in and we got some good training for a little bit. Um, um, like for only about a week and then I, I had to leave. Um, and then, uh, in San Diego is when, um, I got like just a lot of hard training. And I showed up in pretty terrible shape. Um, like I felt physically strong, like healthy, um, for the most part, you know, so I've been few injuries, uh, but I was like not in great shape. I just, you know, um, kind of like, uh, yeah, kind of like gotten sick and just, um, wasn't, like I said, wasn't pushing the cardio as much, wasn't pushing the hard rolls as much. Uh, but then for about a month, I did just like, you know, back to, back to the, back to the basics, like back to like resting season, 
um, you know, like just grind, grind, grind all year or sorry, all, 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 all season, you know, um, or whatever. And just, uh, just try to like, kind of like get my body like conditioned for a long, for like a grueling tournament, which is, which is what it was, you know? So I had, um, like that pretty like grueling who's number one match against Gabriel. And then, you know, six or no, seven or eight days later was, um, like what I, you know, I knew was going to be a very grueling tournament. So, um, I just conditioned my body. Boogie had just great training sessions set up for me and not for me, <laughs> not for me specifically, but like they worked out for me personally because it was, um, really hard, a lot of live training, a lot of specific training. Um, uh, and then PJ too, we were doing specific training as well. Um, a lot of ADCC rounds and stuff. And then Geo up in Oceanside, he had a few sessions. Um, uh, he had many, but a few that I was able to go to in the last month, um, that were ADCC specific. So like, and, but they were mostly live, which was great. It was, you know, a lot of leg lock drills, a lot of uh, turtle drills, a lot of wrestling rounds, um, you know, and then just in general, a lot of live goes, uh, which was good, you know, really, really good. So I, I really pushed it, um, that past month, but before that it was all game plan, all drilling, all technical work, you know, laying like, a lot of like foundation strength uh, training foundation stuff um and then moving into like just the beating your body down and getting it like i said getting in condition for for grueling grueling matches you know i want to know a little bit more about the who's number one match because obviously the match was a fire it was a barn burner it was great i enjoyed it um but you know, we don't necessarily talk like every day, but we're in contact fairly regularly. When I saw you at that who's number one and they were interviewing you, in that interview I said, he's ready. You had an excitement in that interview that made me realize not only is he ready for ADCC trials, he's excited. And to me, when they get you excited and they get you focused, it was you in that moment saying, like, let's fucking go. And I said, whoa, 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 young man. I curse. You don't curse like your elders, okay? You're still a kid. But when I saw that clip, I go, you know, he doesn't need anything right now. He He's all set. So tell me a little bit about the match. Tell me how you felt because you were very complimentary in saying that was the kind of match that you wanted that kind of opponent but it was a difficult match but one that you prevailed in so uh just give me your thoughts on that before we move on over to adcc if you would yeah I, that was just a perfect like that was just i mean not perfect maybe but just like that was, it was just so ideal um the way that who's number one worked out like it was just it was such a great it was a platform that i've been trying to get on for a long time um you know they, they've been talking to me for a long time. We just couldn't really work it out. I had, you know, like issues when I was in Jersey, you know, and then, and then, um, that kind of fell through. I just, I was committed to match it to a match there, but I couldn't do it before that. you know, we just had so many just problems getting, um, you know, getting, uh, I, I remember I had a knee injury and then, uh, and then my opponents were having injuries, all this stuff. So, um, I was finally on that, on that stage against an opponent that was like incredibly like, you know, accomplished, well known, skilled, but he's just also incredibly aggressive. And like I just knew he was gonna come after and he and then that he recognized that like um, you know, win or lose, this is just such a this is a, a really important opportunity for both of us to to show like offensive jiu jitsu. Um and then, you know, on top of that, um it was, you know, it was uh right before the trials. So I was getting like a very high level look and a, a lot of and it was a fifteen minute match, so I got a lot of map time um you know uh right before the match or right before the trials rather so um so it was great it was just great and and um i mean i was bummed i didn't get to the submission but i felt like i had such i had just had such good math time with such like a high caliber opponent you know and one that like i felt like people were interested in watching it wasn't just like um you know it wasn't just a, someone in the rapid community it was, it was the guy who had history in that was in that you know uh like promotion he just beat mikey he just beat kolbate um you know he had beat um he beat a lot of guys that had beat me he beat Conson. um he beat josh cisneros um and he he's like he was very very so accomplished um 
and uh, and just like had the exact style that I was looking at to compete against. So, um, like I said, really would have loved to work here, like gotten a sub. Um, and who knows, we'll probably we'll probably have many more matches, and you know, make, we might sub each other uh, <laughs> over the next few years. But like for that match specifically, which was a great match on 15 minutes against a guy like that, is just so important. Um, and uh, and then leading into the trials, you know, I just felt like I was just like I was just dialed in, I was ready, and I just like gotten you know a look of an insanely tough match out of the way that was like you know um it was like it's like entering trials you know uh like with like having your finals match already out of the way you know um so it was it was really really cool man and just um you know knowing that he was uh he's a he's an adcc invitee you know he's gonna be an adcc like it's just that's it's just great that i got a, a look at a guy in my division you know and, and um and you know I'm probably unlikely that we'll compete there, you know, just considering like the bosses kind of like they try not to match guys up, you know, and rematches early. But even still, just just getting that look against was great. It was just it was awesome. It was perfect. Well, I'm sure in your head you think, okay, this could be an out round or like a, a later in the evening uh, sort of match at ADCC if all things go well. So that that is good. That is a good mentality to have as well. I would say. Um, you mentioned something about flow grappling and, and how they try to match up some of those. I will say one thing about them is that they very much do try to have matches with purpose. So I think that might have been part of the difficulty of matching you up in particular. Because I'm pretty sure that a lot of people will want to have matches with you, especially now. But it's always what makes the most sense for both of these competitors. And uh, that is something that I think on the matchmaking side, as much as I love to give them shit, and believe me, I do. Um, I think that they do try to make those who knows number one uh, matchups special. So that's what it felt like for you on that particular who's number one. As I said, okay, first of all, <laughs> uh, I saw some of the crowd getting a little angry about you not being on the main card. And, you know, we try to keep you clean. Like, I know you don't need to ever voice any of your concerns or frustrations. Don't worry, we will. Because when I saw you on the prelims, I go, what the fuck is this? Okay. Yeah, I mean, they probably want you to tune in for the main card. And when things changed, you were very quickly put as a co-main event. So just uh, just goes to show yeah. uh, that you did add a lot of value uh, to that card. And I think that obviously a lot of this is strategy-based. But it is kind of nice to see uh, people respecting your work and understanding that yeah, uh, there is almost an assurance you will bring everything you got for cards like that. So, yeah, man, I was excited to be on the, the prelims. Just for the record, I was not upset at all. I like yeah, I know, I, like I know. People, uh, uh, being able to everyone being able to watch it for free, but I mean, I <laughs> people, uh, you know, well, it's yeah, a similar I, strategy to sometimes when you would see, say, you a favor, uh, you a favor on. On, uh, you know, the main event of uh, ESPN yeah. Plus prelims or something. It's like, nah, yeah. there's a purpose behind this. And I could see that. It's just sometimes when I see the, the mob, the angry mob, uh, get their pitchforks, I go, guys, guys, there's plenty to address here. I understand yeah. what I think they're trying to do. I share your sentiment that he should be yeah. at the top of the card as well. Um, but I think we can rest assured they're probably going to want to keep you on the main card uh, after a performance like that and a performance at ADCC. So talk to me about the weight cut, because before we got started here, you told me, and this was a bad choice to tell me this, but you were telling me it as a uh, specific for the purpose of this interview. You said your camera may not be at full standard, and yeah. you made the mistake of telling me it because now I know it and I will ask you about it. But you said that you messed up your camera in the middle of the weight cut. What did you do? Uh, well, I dropped my phone in the hot, in the, the tub that I was in, um, like day before the trials, and that was that was brutal because a uh, my like it wouldn't charge after it wouldn't hold it or it only if I plugged it in it would only hold the charge. It wouldn't actually charge, so I was like you know stressed. Every I had to have it plugged in like every second. I had to go like you know, find a, like a portable charger that was already charged at the airport and then make it through. And, um, and then the, my speaker wasn't working anymore, so I couldn't play music, which sucked. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> cause, 
um, you know, that's obviously a big, uh, like a big, it helps a lot when you're cutting weight. So that was terrible. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just the weight cut in general, just the weight was, I, I was just, it's so hard for me to train hard and then not eat to satisfaction, you know, like, like, um, uh, which is all I'm doing for like a, the camp, especially when I got here, it was just like all hard training. And then I was like, Oh my God, like, I'm not, you know, I don't really crave bad food when I'm, um, when I'm like training hard and cutting weight, I just crave food in general. So I'm like eating the right food, like probably like very, very clean by normal person standards, but it's just the quantity was a little too much. Um, so I was just like, I was holding on the weight. Um, you know, uh, like I was just, the weight wasn't coming down. Um, and you know, I had to make 55 for the who's number one the week before, and I had to cut a little weight for that. And I think just like the, like doing a weight cut kind of weight cut was like made getting down to 45 the next week even harder. So, you know, day before I'm still 12 over, I have to, you know, wake up immediately, just run the, the bathtub, um, you know, uh, <laughs> drop my phone. And like, you know, man, it was everything that could have gone wrong, totally went wrong. I was in there for hours, you know, cutting weight in there. And then I was, uh, you know, did cardio with my sauna suit on. And then I, um, I had my neighbor has a sauna. So I was like, bro, it's like, you know, it's a really, really nice sauna. I was like, man, I hate to do this. Um, uh, because like, I'd like to respect the sanctity of his, his personal use sauna, you know? And when you weight cut, it's like, you're not really, you're not being, um, very like, you know, uh, like you're not really acknowledging how disgusting you are. You're kind of just like throwing your clothes everywhere. You just focus. So I was like, it was like unusual for me to be in someone's sauna. Like, ooh, don't get sweaty wear, you know. Like, yeah. um, normally, you know, you just don't even care. You just like, yeah, you know. And then, uh, and then right, you know, I was getting a really good sweat and everything. But then right is, um, you know, I was feeling good and I probably could have got the weight off there. Um, I had to go. I had to like get to my flight. Um, which was like, it was like a 10 30 PM flight. So mind you, so I had spent all day cutting weight. I had about, you know, I'd probably like total like eight hours of like weight cut time and maybe like, you know, a few hours of rest. Um, and then I have to get to the flight. The flight is an absolute disaster. Uh, it doesn't take off on time. Um, I, I booked through some budget airline. So like, you know, I like couldn't even find my gate because it was so small. It was like one air, one kiosk, you know, <laughs> at the airline, like, or at the airport rather. Just like, it was like so impossible to find. I finally get there. We get on and we are about to take off. And then just like, just like you hear just when you're trying to start your car, it's like ring, 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 And we just keep hearing that. And I was just, and, and I've, you know, I've done the song and dance before, man. I know the, the plane's not taking off after that. So then, you know, we're sitting there. They all the, the whole electrical system's down. The AC is off. So it's a full flight. Um, we're all just like everyone's irritated, and annoyed. Most people are drunk, probably. It's on a, it's a flight to Vegas, you know. Um, and uh, and then they're like, all right, yeah, we're not taking off. We go in, and then as we're getting off, they're like, okay, actually, we're gonna see if we can fix it. Um, and it's already like an hour past when we're supposed to take off. Uh, so then we sit in the, the in the um, terminal for an hour finally they say we can take off we get back on we're sitting on the in the you know gate of the tarmac for another two hours because we didn't have the manifesto correct manifesto because some people left you know we couldn't take off that or for, for that reason um and then we finally go uh they take this this weird the guy sitting next to me was tracking the flight he, was, he said we went up to la and then we went to to L, uh to las vegas probably to like see if we'd even make it to LA, you know, and then if we needed to land there, we would have, but then, you know, we cut it to, to Vegas. So the, the flight took even longer than it should have. Um, um, but then as soon as I get in, I have to go straight to the, to the sauna. Um, it's so funny. Cause I go, it's like 3am. I go to the sauna. Um, I get there and I like basically no one there. And I see, uh, the, I see the back of my, uh, someone's head and I was like, Rob, and I look into my buddy Rob, who I'm staying with, uh, and then he's like, "Oh, hey, buddy!" And then we like he was he was there cutting wood as well. Um, and you know, at this point, I still had like six pounds to go, and he's you know, I think he had a, a like maybe eight. Um, he's he was doing eighty eight. Um, so uh, I so we just like kind of suffered in the sauna together. It was the hottest sauna I'd ever been in my life. Um, uh, 
I don't know if you, I don't know if you remember Taylor Alfaro. He used to of course be, I do. Like, yeah, yeah. Chad, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Chad, Chad George's, um, like, uh, student training mm-hmm. partner. Um, and he, uh, he was in there cutting weight also. And he actually, like, it's probably the only reason I made weight because he, I was initially, I was getting in and I was so hot. And as soon as I would start to sweat, I had to get out because mm-hmm. it was so hot. So then I would just lose my sweat again and then I'd go back in. I was doing that for like an hour and it was just, I got off maybe a pound. And then Taylor was like, Hey man, you know, I see you're doing that. Like we could just, we could get this off right now. If, you know, we just do 10 minutes, uh, 10 minute sessions, five minute out, you know, for as long as it. So we had to do, I think like four or five, maybe, uh, I think like six of those, um, six, 10 minute, 10, 10 in, five out, 10 in, five out. Um, and finally, like after six of those or maybe even, yeah, maybe six, um, I, uh, I like, you know, finally make it within like like 0.1 kilos or whatever you know and uh, i was like i'm gonna i'm gonna risk it i'm just gonna go i'm gonna go to weigh-ins and if, I, if i'm 0.1 over i'll spit i don't know I'll, uh i'll do something but um i get there and i was like i was i was 0.1 over when i got there too and uh but i had my my like underwear and my shorts and my socks on so then i was just like i was like starting to take them off and they're like duh, 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 duh. Don't do that. You're not getting naked. Like there are girls here. <laughs> like you're good. You're fine. Like you know. And I and I and I know that like the point. What? Yeah, I was on weight. It was just like a, it was just like a, a matter of me getting naked. But they didn't want to see that. No one wanted to see that. So, but it's like I said. It's not that when you're in the weight cut. You just do not care. Like you don't care who sees your butt. You don't care. Like you know. Like who's in the room. You're you're gonna make weight. You know. So anyway. So I I made it. Um, after no sleep that night. No like a full, almost a day of weight cutting, like just an awful, awful, awful experience. But, um, definitely made me, uh, it definitely made me very, like, feel very like ready to, ready to, you know, hurt someone. <laughs> not, not in a, in a way. just like, well, no, just I, in, like I someone's got to pay. <laughs> Listen, if you had your ideal version it's almost like akin to when the bad guys in movies, you can't have them be certain ethnicities. You can't have them be certain kind of races. So you have to invent aliens or robots and that's who you see people <laughs> fighting. So that's, that's kind of the akin of like your perfect uh, jujitsu villain is like, I want an alien or a robot because I like to hurt things, but I, I don't want to hurt, hurt a, a yeah. human. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that's so funny. Man, but for you, I I wasn't concerned because I think I've also done this song and dance with you. So I don't even send a text because I just know eh, he's in a weight cut, whatever. I saw Train Angry uh, put up a post and they shared your status that said something to the effect that, oh, trying to get on a flight. We'll see what happens. And uh, their post was, will Keith make it? <clears throat> and my thought was, don't do this to me. He's going to make it. <laughs> Don't make me get yeah. overtly concerned. But but again, if you get news aggregators like him, yeah. who sometimes pay attention to things that I don't pay attention to, and I go, oh, shit, is Keith good? And then I, I just kind of like ran through a couple of your stories, and I go, no, he's just having dumb travel. This is probably no worse than yeah. Grapple Fest, where you got to go over a uh, pond and you don't know how something definitely. goes. I'm like, at the very yeah, least. Yeah, wasn't that bad. There is a four and a half hour trip that he could make to Vegas if he really, really needs to uh, from L.A. I forget your San Diego, but uh, there is a way to make it happen. I just knew in my mind, I go, oh, God, this poor kid's already got to battle travel again. Uh, It's never it's never as easy as it's supposed to be, my man. Yeah, yeah, I 100% would have. I was already planning on driving, like, the, when it was canceled the first time, or, you know, when we had to get off the first time. And it's, they were saying it was canceled, but then, um, uh, but then they figured it out. And I was I was already just prepared to, to drive. And I would have got there, like, right at 6, so I would have had to cut weight in the car. I would have literally had to, like, sauna suit, you know, like, fast lean up and then just run the heater the whole time, which would have been terrible. I would have got it done, but, it would, like, that's dangerous to do, uh, driving night too especially the desert you know so i'm glad i didn't have to do that but that would have made it happen man i would have done it just no matter how no matter like how awful or what would have you know gone wrong like i i, I would have made that you know well let's get into the fun stuff the stuff that both you and i like a lot which is talking matches because um you know famously a few years ago you were adcc correspondent so i know it's easy to uh get you to talk matches 
However, having said that, uh, you start off with the buy, which pluses and minuses. Okay. Pluses yeah, are sure. always yeah. like, hey, man, I don't mind being the first seed. That sounds great. Uh, but I also know you like to kind of get your feet wet. I know you like to get out there and start immediately getting into it, especially after you make that weight cut. I know you want to feed yourself, hydrate, all that sort of stuff. But I know you as somebody who's like, I'm ready to go. So first round happens. Are you watching the first round or do you go into a zone and kind of go into your own thing as uh, the first few rounds are happening around you? Yeah, I didn't watch any matches until the quarters just because so much they can happen. There's so many matches happening. It's not even worth like stressing over, um, you know, let the bracket shake out. And then the quarters is when we're going to really see like who is, or I think maybe even the round of 16 is maybe when I started to watch, you know, but that's like, all right, these are the guys I'm going to go against, you know. But before then, it's like I might not even know these guys anyways. Um, so I'm going to be figuring it out like, you know. Uh, in the match regardless so it's not worth stressing myself out so i just i just let the, the first round the first few rounds happen however they're gonna happen and uh and then you know first few matches just you know just let let them go how they're gonna go you know okay so then let's talk about your first match starts off pretty decent of a day uh walk me through that one if you would uh yeah i mean all i knew about this kid the first kid was he's a he's a fun funny kid um uh he was like probably a purple belt if I had to guess. Um, I just knew it was like he was gonna be good, but I could probably finish with whatever I wanted. Um, I so I wasn't like game planning too strategically, right? I was just kind of letting it like like feeling him out a little bit. Um, they kind of reset me like really weird on the back. I remember so I lost the back like a minute in, and then uh, and then I took it like a couple seconds later. But I was just like annoyed with the reset, so I was like, all right, duly noted. Make sure your resets are are. Uh, <laughs> you know, on point for the rest of the weekend, like that you, I remember, cause I didn't remember where I was, but I knew I was going to take his back in like, you know, two seconds, but then they reset me in a weird position. I was like, okay, this wasn't it, but whatever. Um, but I finished that match. Um, and, uh, you know, it's really just about like, you know, just kind of minimizing energy that, that first match or the first few matches, you know, is just get out of there as clean as, as you can, you know? So the first match went pretty much perfect, you know? Can I ask this? Because, you were essentially a friendly human being. So <laughs> unfortunately, one of the problems of being a friendly human being is you feel like these things are jujitsu reunions. So it feels like almost everybody knows you. What is your preferred vibe? I, I'd love to get this on record because um, I don't tend to approach people when they're competing. And I know mm-hmm. a lot of people because I don't want to get in a zone. I've had people be like, oh, were you cool with me? Like, what was up, man? You didn't come say hi. And I was like, you're competing. I don't need the acknowledgement. I love (laughs) you as a human being, but I also know to respect your space. So do you have a preference when it comes to that sort of a thing? Because I think it's good to maybe put that out there every once in a while uh, as a nice way to tell people. Because again, uh, you don't want the Hollywood experience of like Will Ferrell was so mean to me one day, and it's like no, Will Ferrell was trying to have lunch, I know, right? you know? Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> um, dude. I mean, it's totally fine if people come up to me. Like, it's you can totally say hi. You can even we can have a conversation. Even um, the only thing that I would probably have to put a, halt, a stop to is like you if I'm like warming up or like or I'm, I'm like sitting down and like clearly like doing something like either on my phone or stretching or something. Uh, and you want to have a conversation with me. It is, like that is not the time to, to have like a, uh, sorry, not even a conversation, but just to like help me with questions or like, like really try to get in my head. Like that is not the time. Like, um, especially if we're not already friends, you know, um, like you got, you got to beat it, you know, but dude, for the most part, it's like, yeah, of course you could come with me and I'm going to like smile at you or like, you know, have a good conversation. Um, but n- no, I got, I got, for the most part, like, I have to, to to focus, you know. It'd be the same thing if I was on open mat and a guy was like, "Hey, you want to roll?" and then just started talking to me the whole time and be like, "Okay, which is it?" You know. <laughs> um, so yeah, so like you know, but I mean, I try not to like just like put on a mean face and like mean mug everyone, you know. I'm totally fine, uh, like you know, hanging out and stuff and From talking. But what I have observed is you're really good with people, uh, oh, in, in a in a general sense of like, Hey, no, totally. Hey, what's up? Let's talk. You got a sister. That's great. Like you do a really good interaction. 
um, I am very personable, but yeah. I know if I was competing and I think this would jar people, I don't, I'm not this like, this is sure. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah. you know, I was famously when I was playing sports, uh, I had coaches who would be like, um, are you not mad right now? And I was like, I, this is just how I have to be, you know? And it wasn't yeah, until yeah. I grew up a little bit later that I learned how to be a little different and I wasn't playing as many sports. I, I found that was a big consistent, but I'm like, y'all know if you see me competing, I'm, I'm not the same human being host ref. Great. <laughs> Producer ref, yeah. eh, not your best, <laughs> but exactly, yeah. uh, competitive ref quiet and uh, usually sure. observant. So uh, I, I know yeah. there are many sides to people. I just want to be uh, fair because especially when you see something like this, I'm sure you're getting people coming up to you and be like, Keith, that first round, crazy. That's great. And you're like, cool, focus. So I didn't know if that yeah. is something. Or they're just like, yeah, some people would give me their opinion. They're like, they're just like, man, I think it's going to be you and so-and-so <laughs> in, the, in the semis or the finals. And it's like, Bro, it's the first round. Like, it's the first day. Like, who? The, what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> are you going to go out there and fight my guys for me then, you know? Like, uh, it's just so – it's so silly, dude. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, I really I really care about this random person that I've never met's opinion on my, uh, my, my like, potential matches. Well, the other side of that is you will be astounded how much people love being right. So sure. <laughs> it is a good story to be able to say like, you know, I went up to Keith, I told him yeah. he was going to win. <laughs> you know, I think in that moment, that's when he was actually going to win. It's like, yeah. well, also Keith was the number one seed. It was hard. There was never an assurance, but he did win. So congrats, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. No, it's, people, people are funny, man, but it, it's cool. But for the most part, it's like, I will always talk. I'm not going to be like, yo man, like, like you can't be, can't be listening to me saying that. Like I, it's, I will always look <laughs> and I will always give you like, give you a, give you a like happy or like a, you know, a amicable. Like, kind of, like, yeah. No, no, no. I've, I've never seen you turn away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I've never seen you anyway. turn away anybody, but the day that I, I see you be like, Hey kid, I don't take photos in between matches. Get out of here. <laughs> like a parrot. That's when I'm really going to come back and replay this. So, um, yeah, right. Yeah. No, dude, if that ever happens, yeah, someone needs to smack me. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's something we've gone too far. I'm pretty sure you're going to be okay. We go into your second match, and that is against Senor Arnal. Uh, talk yeah. us through that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, that's cool, man. I know I know Tony pretty well. Um, and he's, I just know how tough he is, and I know that he's uh, – He's he's very very good very good guard very good like uh, like uh, actually like pretty good pretty well rounded actually um, but I knew it was gonna be a challenge to sub him so uh, you know sub only period I was just gonna let everything fly I was just gonna throw subs at him and if they stuck they stuck if they didn't they didn't and you know I had a few good things locked up on him but nothing that I you know thought was like you know definitely gonna make him tap and didn't you know um, so I wasn't too discouraged or anything but then as soon as we got to the points period. My plan was just get on top and just 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 put the pressure on, you know, not even for the full three minutes, um, try to pass his guard, but just put the pressure on. And then about a minute and a half is when I just like, you know, it was like, okay, here we pass. And then, uh, you know, I got to um, I got to like a few like like head and arm control spots, a few like, you know, uh, body lock spots. And that was my goal was just like get to those kind of cook him and then like, you know, like kind of melt into him a little bit and then pass, you know, and, and I think I'm passing like the last 30 seconds. Um, uh, because I was expending all that time just like trying to like just trying to like put the pressure on him. You know, I wasn't I didn't need to I didn't need to like pass over and over and over. I just needed one pass. That was all I does what I knew all I needed. Um so I was like just you know wait for the last minute and a half. As soon as that I saw that minute the last ninety seconds go, then I was like, okay, now I'm gonna work for the pass. And then I like I said I got him in the last thirty seconds. Um it was it was good um that I kinda went in with that mentality because you know had I thought I was gonna sub this guy easy I would have been screwed, you know, because he's not, he's not easy to put away and he's not, it's not a smart idea to try to sub a guy who's really impossible to sub um, when you don't have to, you know what I mean? Um, so, uh, yeah, so that, that went just exactly according to plan, you know? With that being said, was that your last match of day one? Yeah, it was just those two on the first day, which was a little underwhelming, um, but uh, it was good. Just got my feet wet, recovered from the weight cut. Um, you know, had, had like, you know, like two pretty solid, I think matches, which was good and nothing, nothing that, blow, that blows you out of the water or anything. And I think that's good too. It doesn't set my, my expectations super high for me too. You know, it's just like, all right, you got it done and 
we'll move on to the to the really tough part. Now, I'll tell you one thing I hate about doing brackets is when I'm going through them and I start putting together things and I go, uh-oh, yeah, yeah all right, it's him and Elias. Oh. And I love Elias, I know. Too. And I know yeah. you have the utmost respect for him. You wrote a wonderfully complimentary thing about him on your Instagram uh, after the fact. Like, the two of you guys, again, such respect for each other, both very well-liked, very good individuals. And... I think there was maybe a little bit of an excitement for you both to have this match because when I saw you guys like talking about it, it was like both of you were like, yep, it's going to be a day starting off with Keith, starting off with Elias. Like I thought that was a cool thing to see. So do you mind uh, putting some of that into perspective from at least uh, your side? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's so tough, man. That's the second time that him and I have matched up really early in the tournament too. And um, and just considering how good I know he is, um, it's, it sucks because like, you know, I'd like for him to get a little bit more recognition and like, and like get, get his, his shot, you know, and, um, and make it further in the bracket, which I know he's perfectly capable of. He's so good and people don't really know. Um, but, um, man, it's also too, because it sucks too, because we're really good friends. Like I, I talk to him pretty much every week. Um, you know, we're really, you know, I'm always checking in, I'm always, you know, um, checking on him and Laird and, and, uh, his girlfriend's really cool. And, and, uh, just, and I was actually hanging out with them the, the first day I was like, I was, uh, my stuff by there. So I was like, oh, it's a cool to warm up like over here. And then, oh yeah, of course we're talking and they're such good guys. And I really feel like him and I are kindred spirits and like, you know, we have like a, this, a such a similar mentality. Like it's a, it's like a, a it's kind of like a, um, like a warrior in a garden type mentality, you know, like, like I, I truly think we're like two of the more like, like, um, you know, uh, like skilled and like competitive like guys out there. But I don't think we would, we don't make it our whole like identity. Like, you know, we, we are like, I think like, you know, try to try to be like, you know, like care for our family and care for our friends and, and, you know, and, and, um, and, uh, it just sucks to, to go against a guy like that. Um, you know, so like I said, it's so early in the tournament. I truly do think he would have made Final Four um, if the bracket were different because I think that he's he's um, he's uh, just so skilled and so good in that rule set too. You know, um, so that that was a bummer, man. But um, but I hope that um, just me talking about it maybe can give him a little more like you know the shine that I I wish he had had um, like by going further on in the tournament. You know, I feel um, like uh, people who are observant probably pick that up sure. and, I hope so. yeah. uh, but again you always worry man uh, is he under the radar how is this going obviously he is a champ himself uh, so yeah. it is difficult to uh, understate certain expectations but at the same point like yeah I just I knew from uh, a setting uh, I knew you guys were close and I knew it would be a good match. So I, I always feel good assurance on that. It's, it's one of the nice things about um, being at home and watching is that I just kind of put the brackets to the side and I just go, okay, are, are they going now? Okay. I'm going to watch and it is cool. So talk to us about that match if you would. Yeah, man. I mean, um, I knew it was going to be a two point match. Uh, I didn't know if I was going to like have to get a takedown or a sweep. Um, but I knew it was going to be one or the other. It was going to be two points. I'm going to have to hold on to that lead. I didn't think I was going to sub them. Um, but I, I knew that I could score and then just kind of hang on, which is exactly what happened. I, I you know, I was like going to hand fight with him and wrestle with him for a little bit. But considering it was the first match of the day, um, I was just thinking I might as well just, uh, just kind of pull and get warm. So I was playing off bottom. I was like throwing some subs out there, you know, as much as I could, but nothing crazy. He's got a very dangerous. Um, like a uh, um, standing uh, passing game because he actually he transitions in the arm bars really well and I've trained with him a bunch and he, he catches me um, with those in training so I knew and I could feel him too when he was setting him up he was getting risk control and stuff he, he sets him up out of nowhere so I was I was really really careful about that careful about like seeing that um, but then you know as soon as uh, as soon as the points period happened um, I was just thinking okay now is when I get my two. I was just going to come under, um, get, I got the sweep. Um, and then, uh, he came up and now I was like, okay, like 
just you know uh, stall basically like, like not even stall but just like just you know pure like all hips all defense he was just throwing the kitchen sink at me as far as takedowns like you know just blast double into a body lock you know you know uh like an underhook like a nuchimata like wizard you know kick in, anything he could get to get me down um uh and uh, i just knew i just had to keep you know keep my hips hips back you know stay uh stay safe and um it was a really really tough for and then i just won on the two points but it was a really really tough match especially for the first match of the day um but uh, i think it was good because it was like again it was just like a good um like blow my lungs beat a good good dude you know and uh just kind of set the ball rolling you know a little bit so that's what's up that was a good and again i enjoyed it that's the nice part about it is, is that it does show i think you both got kind of things that you could show off on that so i'm like okay sure. listen okay. at least they you know it's not a blowout they both have something that they they have something good out of this and uh, yeah, you're you're very observant. His his arm bars, from what I've seen as an observer, not even somebody who's experienced them, as I've been like, damn, those are those are pretty solid. Kid's good. So good. <clears throat> so now we go into the round of sixteen. Things are starting to whittle down. You mentioned that you weren't necessarily watching the first day, but now when you get to that thirty two sixteen, are you starting to observe? Um, not yet. I don't think I had watched any of the round of 16. I think I maybe tried, but I was like, there's just so many matches. Like, and then, um, I passed by, uh, Robert Deagle and I was like, Hey, did you, did you win your match? I didn't even see. And he's like, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, and I was like, I was like, oh, okay, sweet. I figured he's like, well, it was tough. And I was like, I was like, I was like, oh, okay. Well, um, man, this turn this is a tough tournament, you know? So I figured, uh, we both had tough first round matches. Um, uh, which I think was probably like good for both of us because it kind of like kicked us into high gear a little bit. But, um, you know, I knew I was going to go against Eagle. Uh, we've had a match in the past and I was, uh, I was thinking this is, it was a little bit different when I, when I felt him, man, the first time we went against each other, he was so strong and, uh, and he had such a different style, very Eddie Cummings esque. Like it's exactly how I imagine a match with Eddie Cummings would have felt. Um, and I ended up countering a leg lock that he entered on my legs and I countered, um, into a leg. And I was thinking, okay, well, here's, here's, here's what I know. I know that A, uh, I can leg lock him and B, he doesn't think that I'm going to initiate the leg attacks. He thinks I'm just going to probably pass from the outside and work for, for either pass or subs from there. Um, uh, you know, from a pass. Um, but, uh, so my idea was, okay, why don't you initiate a leg? Why don't you make him think that you're going to do that? You're, that you're going to pass. Um, and work for like subs from top, um, or from the pass rather, uh, and then enter the legs. Um, and so I was passing for a little bit. Um, I felt just like way, way better. Like his, his guard was nowhere near as threatening as it was the first time that I competed against him. Um, because I probably was more used to it at that point, you know? Um, and then I just sat back on a leg and I could tell he probably, I mean, he might have, he might have thought of that, but like I knew that like at least majority people did not think I was going to do that. Um, so I sit back on his leg. Um, I try to finish the inside heel hook, a straight ankle. Uh, he crosses my foot to 50 50. And that's when I just, um, you know, I have, I have a few specific, uh, kind of like, um, ways to, uh, to finish him right there. And as soon as I, as, as I bite the heel on pretty much anyone, like I, I, I could finish, you know, so, um, he was, uh, you know, he was, he was, he, right, rightfully so, kind of, kind of tapped as soon as I, as soon as I should put it, put some pressure on that, on that. Yeah, that was uh, pretty dope to watch as well. We now make our way to those quarterfinals. As I'm yeah, watching it, here, now I'm starting to, again, get that surge, that good feeling of like, okay, yeah. things are looking good. And I don't know if you understand this as uh, somebody who's watching. I know you watch everything. Um, <clears throat> but when we're watching you, I, I can describe the feeling of most of your friends and family, which is, nope. Don't get cocky. We're good. Yeah. <laughs> Things are going well. That's it. So yeah. I reserved from the comfort of my couch over here. I reserved a very, okay. Like, I couldn't even get excited, and that was a great finish. I just go, okay. And uh, there was a very, <laughs> very nice uh, way to continue it on. So now we're at quarters. You mentioned yeah, this is what... things happen. Yeah. I'll go ahead and take the wheel, sir. Oh no! This yeah, this is when I started to actually watch the matches. I, I right after my match, I went over to the mat that he and Esteban were competing on, and 
I didn't know who was going to win that because this one's, you know, the tough match for anyone. He can really beat anyone. Um, and uh, Mauricio handled him really well. Um, and uh, he played basically the game that I knew he was going to play. Um, and so leading into our match, I was thinking, okay, I know that I can, I can definitely hang with him in his world, which is like on the feet, um, you know, uh, hand fighting, battling for takedowns, you know, like just kind of like MMA style, like, you know, grinding, kind of a grinding style, which is what, what he is mainly focusing on. Um, but I was also thinking, I, I know that I can take it to my world too. Like I can, I can tie up his legs, work for heel hooks. And then maybe I was thinking work to either sweeps or, you know, get on, just get on top and get him to close back and his back. Um, but, uh, Mauricio, I've never seen him tap to anything. I've never seen him get tapped out, out by anyone. And he's gone in some of the best guys, um, in the sport, you know, uh, Johnny Grippo, um, you know, uh, I remember watching him in Jordan Holy back in the day. Um, uh, a lot, a lot of like really, really tough. He, dude, he went against Hulk, Hulk, but tap him. Um, and, uh, and, um, I was thinking it was another one of those, those situations where I was like, don't waste your energy on sub, just throw them out there. And then, you know, so I was throwing him out there, throwing him out there. He wasn't tapping. I was getting really good looks. So we're going to chop anyone. Um, but he wasn't, he wasn't going for it. Um, and then, you know, once the point period happened, I was starting to come up. I was starting trying to get the sweep. I was trying to get, you know, back takes, um, et cetera. And it was like way, way, you know, he was way tougher. Um, than I would have hoped. Um, so I was like, go back to the leg and I had a really good bite on his leg. And I, I bet you, he didn't think that I was going to go back to that, you know, considering I'd already lost, you know, the bite a few times and, and hadn't finished, uh, for the, the sub only period. But then once I did, um, I got the, you know, kind of got to my preferred, like uh, finishing spot there, like, um, kind of like belly down, um, like outside some copy, I think, um, type finish. And, uh, I was really surprised this happened, but I was really pumped because, um, that made, that, I mean, that probably would have been a match that went to overtime, and then I would have had to waste a lot of energy there. So um, as soon as that happened, I was like, okay, perfect. That's awesome. That was ideal. That was a, a, an awesome finish, by the way. And I've seen you finish from there. Like, I, you know what's great is having rolled with you and, and watched a lot of what you do, there are moments where I, I don't want to profess like I know know your game, but I'm observant enough to know, yep. Yeah, That'll do. <laughs> That'll do, Pig. Yeah. Like, spot. yeah, yeah. <laughs> those spots where I feel very confident uh, in your ability yeah. to finish. And and as I was watching that match, I go, okay, yeah, this bodes well. If he's here, and before I know it, I was like, if he's, oh, yeah, we're done. Oh, okay. Well, cool. I felt good about that. Yeah. So uh, we now move Thanks. to what I thought was on paper something that had a lot of interest going into it because. Uh, you know, Derek has been on fire lately, or I'm sorry, Damien. Uh, thank you. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking of a different Derek. Uh, Damien's been, yeah, Derek, fucking... Derek's been on fire too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Damien has been killing it. And I knew on paper, you guys would have a great clash in this setting and it yeah. was good. Um, you ended up winning and, and there was again, more excitement that was building. You could see, uh, that elation happening in your face too. You know, I, I want to kind of note the similarities between the elation on your face with this match, as I saw from you at that who's number one. Like there was a similar vibe of, yup, I'm ready for it, let's go. Tell me about this match from your perspective. Um, well, man, I mean, you know, I didn't know who was going to win him and Andrew because they had a, a, a match a long time ago. And uh, I think it was actually only last summer, maybe the summer before. Um, and, uh, you know, it was a really competitive match with like 90 minutes or something. Um, and I was like wondering, you know, who's going to win a match. So when I went over after my match with Mauricio and I watched um, their match happen, I was really impressed with, with Damon's ability to kind of withstand Andrew's um, pace and pressure. Um, and get his own offense off, which I thought was really cool. I don't actually even know how he won that match. I think it was a penalty or a rest decision. Um, but I was watching the whole thing, and I was just impressed with both of them. So, um, you know, I was uh, I was prepping for either, and then as soon as he won, I was like, okay, Damien's it's actually it's, it's, it's good that it happens like this because Damien has – he's beat me. He beat me at Purple Belt. Um, and uh, and then after that, he was kind of my boogeyman. Like, he, he really, like, you know uh, – like met, I met, I called you after that match. I don't know if you remember that. I was in my, my my cafeteria at school, and I was like, "Man, what happened?" Like I just busted my knee against this blue belt, you know. 
and I was really like, he was always a boogeyman for me. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we had se- several matches after that. And I just remember like, I'm just the, uh, you know, man, I'm just, I'm going to play a tight game against this guy, you know, always like, and when I, you know, uh, my first match on, I was like, no, no, this isn't just a normal guy. Like you got to really bring your A game for this guy and be, be basically perfect. So, um, leading into this match, I was thinking, you know, um, again, maybe I can hand fight with him and, and try to stand with him and, and, and work, um, for top position, or, um, I could just work to the legs, you know, get good looks at his legs and get him to respect that and then work for sweeps and then get him to expose his back. And that's exactly what happened. So I got good looks on his legs, you know, in the sub only period. And then as soon as points happened, I was uh, using the legs to get him or to get him you know, to build myself up. And then that made him turtle. Um, and then I got his back, I got Mao. And then from there I was like, you know, okay, five point lead. It'd be really hard for me to blow this with 30 seconds. So, um, uh, he kicked me off and I could have just like stood up or st- uh, stayed on top and then risked him standing up maybe. Um, or, uh, you know, I could have played on, on top, but I was just, you know, kind of just like, all right, it's fine. If I fall over, I'll give up two off the, you know, the reversal, um, for ADCC. If you go from top to bottom, um, period, it's, it's like, uh, well, unless you attempt the sub, but. Uh, most of the time, it's just a reversal. So I was like, all right, two points, just don't let him pass. And then he was just going, you know, pretty crazy for the pass. But there was no way I was going to, I was going to give it up in, you know, in, in 30 seconds. So, um, I was really, really excited after that match to, uh, just to, to, cause in my mind, it was, that was a, as tough a, a match as any of the bracket, you know? I could see you go into that very hyper guard, uh, sense. <laughs> Because you did the math, and that's always good because there are some competitors who sometimes get lost in the math and they don't play a smarter game. So you did the math, you knew where you stood, and then it just became a, okay, if he doesn't pass, I win. And then you went into that mode, and I saw you, and I know from firsthand experience, it can be difficult to pass you, um, but I think the one thing that you really did a good job of is that there was a lot of uncertainty for him on this one because he's always been good, but there was a lot of momentum with this new team, with all of them being a cohesive unit. Like, you know, one of the things I want to pay, uh, you know, respects and, and attribute to them is just like, you know, there's a whole brand new world of like seeing these teams, these factions from these monster teams that we knew them and being like, what have they been working on? And how are they using their skills to be better now? And that team was yeah. going hype that whole weekend. So, you know, there's always the competitor you know, and then there's sometimes the competitor you don't know what they've been working on or what's been happening in their room. And you did a great job of managing that, keeping it to your good strategy, and then yeah. utilizing that and not getting caught up in it. Because when I saw it, I go, this is awesome. You know, you, you killed the momentum. And I'm sure at this point, as you are thinking about what could happen on the other side of that bracket uh, with uh, scenarios and also with Grippo, it's kind of like, man, those are going to be two very difficult opponents in their own right. So uh, the degree of difficulty goes up. Um, yeah. Were you looking at a rematch for, for Gianni? I mean, obviously it didn't go that way. But it felt like a lot of people wanted to will that to happen because yeah, I mean, oh sorry, no, no, no. I was just I that was the that was the vibe that I got was potentially because they put him as the two seed. But from my perspective, it seemed like if I was that guy who went up to you and said like, "I think it's you and Gianni in the <laughs> in the finals," um, sure, but uh, he was on a tear as well, so he, he had a lot of momentum going into that as well. Yeah, I didn't know who would win that match. Um, I knew Gianni had the chance for sure, um, but um, I also just know how tough Josh is. I mean, he was uh, he was my I think my last loss at Brown Belt, maybe. Um, and he 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 really surprised me in that match. I didn't know who he was really, but he was so good. I just remember thinking he's so much stronger than me. He's so much more technical. He was very very precise, like very very good. Um, and I knew, you know, obviously Gianni knew that. Obviously Gianni knows how good he is. Um, but he was, I think he was trying a little bit, he was trying a lot of different things. Like he was he was wrestling up a good amount. 
Um, I remember he was standing with them a good amount. Um, and, like, you know, you kind of have to stick to your A game against Josh, you know, um, because he is really, really perfect everywhere, really well-rounded everywhere, I think. Um, and he's just so tough. So uh, when Gianni was starting to stand with him more and he was starting to, like, give up in my mind, um, a lot of the things that he does really well, I was thinking he was going to lean Josh his way at that point. Um, and then he obviously, you know, he got the takedown, uh, and then Gianni turned his back, and then he got the Sulawo. Um, and, this dude, I was freaking frightened when that happened because, you know, uh, A, you know, Gianni looked like he was in pain. Uh, like, yeah, that probably did a lot of damage. And B, um, because I knew I had to compete against Josh next. <laughs> um, so I was like, fuck, that could be me, you know? Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, and man, and, and, and going into the, to the Josh match, like, you know, I was very, I was, I was very low confidence because obviously he's beaten me before. Like someone who beat you will always have like a little bit of an edge over you, I think. Um, uh, and, uh, I just knew I had to be perfect. Like I can't, can't give up anything. I can't, I have to play really tight, especially ADCC rules. I can't pull guard in the first, um, you know, I can't pull guard at all. Actually, you get a, you get a negative. Um, and I was thinking, okay, like, you know, I can't really go to my safe zone. Um, so I was just thinking, um, you know, be, be precise and be as strong as I can, you know? And, um, and man, I mean, when I tied up with him, he, you know, it was hard because I, you know, I just remember him being stronger. The last in our last match, I just remember being much stronger. And this time I, I felt like we had comparable strength, which was good for me to know that at least, at least my strength training is working a little bit, you know, and I'm, and I'm getting a little bigger and stronger now, which, um, I never put any focus into when I was younger. Um, but so that was encouraging right off the bat, you know, um, and as we're hand fighting more, you know, I wasn't committing to anything. I wasn't really like, um, trying to uh kind of like over uh yeah like i said i wasn't really trying to over commit to anything um but i uh but i was thinking like just throw out attacks just throw out offense you know and then um my game plan going in was pick up a single try to dump a single try to finish you know try to ideally get him to expose his back even though i knew he probably wouldn't um but like try to finish the single and then if all else fails just you know having that single and committing to it for more than three seconds you, you're able to pull and I was just going to pull right into a leg. Um, and when I had the single and I was like trying to finish for a little bit, I was trying to finish, trying to finish, couldn't finish. Um, and I had like kind of like, he kind of got his leg back and I kind of let go. And then I was like, oh shit, now I have to get it again if I want to pull. So I just like reached back out to it, pulled it back in and then like sat immediately into the leg. And I was like, was that, does that count? Like, is that three seconds on the takedown? And like, well, would I have given up the negative there? I don't think I did watching it back. I think that I, I, I had not broken contact enough to, um, to get the negative, but still, I was like in my head, I was like, that might have been a bad idea, but it's okay. And then just got on the heel, um, did not expect to finish because he was clearing his knee. And then, uh, you know, got to, like I said, my, my kind of like my optimal finishing spot is like, I got like belly down, um, uh, kind of like 50, 50 like kind of like backside 50 there. Um, might have been in outside of the but, but anyways, yeah. And I was just so, just so happy when I'm happy because that meant that I don't have to stress about points. I don't have to stress about an overtime. I don't have to stress about, you know, all this stuff, like, you just tap them and it's done, you know? And that was uh, such a cool feeling, especially against a guy who beat me before and beat me, you know, uh, pretty convincingly. It kind of took a lot of confidence for me back in the day, you know? Um, I was I was really happy to get that back. And and, uh, and I know that we'll probably have, like, a, a good rivalry for a few years, for years to come now because we're the same weight. And uh, I know he's going to be doing really well for the rest of his career, and I hope to, you know, I ideally do well uh, myself. So um, he's even someone I think I could run into at ECC potentially if we both here. If I, if I make it far enough, I, I'm pretty confident to do it as well. Yeah, uh, compliments to whoever your uh, strength and conditioning people have been because uh, the last time I think I saw you, uh, I almost called you Beef Kikorian. So uh, <laughs> pass that on to them uh, so that they can take uh, any kind of branding off we'll of that. Do. You said yeah. that you also went back and you watched that match. Uh, when did you end up going back to watch that match? A few days later. Um, yeah, a few days later. I uh, I had stayed in Vegas for like a day after with Joe, Rob, Ronnie, and Victor. And uh, and we went to the pool and went to the dispensary and got drinks at the pool, got, you know, stuff at the dispensary, and we were having a good time. So 
I was uh, not in the like right frame of mind to uh to to like rewatch match footage. So I waited a little bit. Um, just was a little more clear headed, <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and then I watched it, and uh, yeah, and um, not much I can take away from a short match like that, you know, especially under those rules. Um, but um, but yeah, I, I I was connecting some of like my memories of the match to like what I saw you know, rewatching, it. Um, and yeah, it was yeah, that was about about what I what I thought. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm gonna ask this, even though we kind of prefaced on the mental side uh, a little bit earlier, but I want to know why did it work this time? Why do you, in your head, why do you feel like this time it was an actual result that you wanted? Man. Yeah. I don't know. Honestly, like I, I was not, I didn't expect to win that tournament at all. Like in just, just history alone would tell me that I'm not destined to win that, that tournament. You know, I know I'm capable but for whatever reason, I just, I, you know, I would get pretty close, you know, and I just still couldn't, couldn't do it. And that was a huge bummer. Um, and I just think that like not putting expectations on myself, you know, just kind of letting it fly and, and just like taking it match by match and, and, and um, trusting in, like, you know, my preparation and like my team and, and, you know, the people around me and which was, which is really important, you know, and it wasn't all on me. It was, you know, the burden was taken, um, you know, by, by Boogie and Josh and, and TJ, you know, like team at Geo and, you know, all my teammates, um, and, and team and everyone, you know, like they were helping me through it and they gave me confidence and they believed in me and, and, um, you know, and then, I don't know, just maybe the mentality shift helped me a lot, you know, and, um, and this, I don't know, it's just a combination of things, you know, but like I said, I mean, I, I'm a, I don't even know if that same tournament were to happen next week. I don't think I could go, go in there and, and have the same success. Um, it was just a perfect storm. Like it's just, some days you're just in the zone, you're on and, and it works, you know, um, very well. Like I think Josh was in the zone that day, you know, and someday you're in the zone and it doesn't happen, you know? Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just, um, so I don't want to chalk it up to randomness uh, as much, but, uh, but definitely like, I would think a lot of mentality shifts help me a lot of, you know, um, much like more game planning now, um, you know, different methods of training or attention to, um, you know, the things that I don't love doing or historically haven't loved doing like training, conditioning and drilling, you know, uh, and correct diet and stuff, you know, um, but all that stuff really, really does help, you know. It does seem like a wonderful uh, combination of things did come together. And you mentioned, obviously, some strength training. You mentioned uh, some game plan coming to fruition. Um, a couple of observations I'll, I'll make for you um, that I don't want to <laughs> necessarily uh necessarily have you say for yourself but maybe these are observations that ring true to you um there's something to be said about being there <clears throat> like that experience that you put in from those other trials like you don't know how to access that until you need it and sometimes yeah. it's, it's easier to hang in what the pain of it wasn't <clears throat> than to know how to tap into that <clears throat> so when i see people who have been in big competition settings and they're able to pull, like, I've been here, so the adrenaline dump and other factors that sometimes can play a role will play less of a role. Now I can focus on certain other factors, like an audience, a crowd, all these things aren't going to even get to me. It's just now it's less variables, and you can hone in and dial on those things. And one thing that I also wanted to point out, which was, you know, I know you as somebody who observes and does a lot of research. And years before, you were the guy who probably would have watched every single match. And I think now with the experience, not only can you go into other situations with a game plan, impose that game plan, but I think that it is a testament to the hours that you have built in that you do have a card catalog of memories about people in their games so even though it may not seem like in the moment you're doing that work it's because you've already done it 
And I think all of those things and more were kind of the things that I saw make a huge factor. And uh, a lot of it's hard to explain to people because, you know, obviously they see the consistency and they know on paper, they're like, well, Keith keeps making it to finals. And I go, true, something clicked, something worked. And I'm glad that it did because it was so refreshing. Uh, my wife actually was coming home uh, from the store and the story I have is she was asking if I could come help with groceries and, and come pick it up. And I was like, babe, um, kid's kind of competing right now. Like, I, I I hope you understand this. She loves you. She thinks you're great. That doesn't matter to a wife. Oh, when you got to yeah, pull yeah. up <laughs> yeah. groceries. So I literally, uh, I ran, I, like I got the groceries, <laughs> pulled them back right. up. As soon as I got in, you were in what was the sequence that would ultimately get you your, your win. Oh, and wow. oh, that's funny. it was such perfect timing because if I had just shown up and I didn't see the sequence and I just saw you won, I would have probably been yeah. furious. Um, oh, even though I, I can know, easily yeah, yeah. go rewind it and just see it. Like <laughs> I was so elated that as soon as I put down the groceries, I was like, you sort them. Hey, look at that. And then I, you know, <clears throat> I very quickly clap here. No one can hear that. But I don't clap at all for people, but for you, I do. And oh. I can tell you that I didn't necessarily want to be there for any other reason to have witnessed yours. Because <laughs> to me, I was like, that's why we love sports. That's why we love people who work so hard. So you had a great tournament a true testament to all the work that you've been putting in. Um, and I want to point something out. Uh, I'll make one last estimation here because I can do it on public record, which is I think one difference maker might be the fact that you learned how to not only uh, maintain and control your own demons, but you learned how to take the uncertainty of other boogeymen in your life, be it opponents be it uh, unpredictable variables, but you learn how to conquer those things at this tournament. And uh, I thought that was pretty cool because hearing you say right before your finals, like, ah, you know, I didn't know, man. He looked really scary. You know, Damien, man, he's got a good win over me. Elias, he's my friend. Like you learned how to make all of these things work to your favor. So I think those are unspoken things, but I wanted to make sure that you were told them and that you are aware of them because it's a nice benchmark, but we're always looking for the next thing. And come this September, there is a next thing. So uh, as we start to wind down, a couple quick questions here. What can we expect from you at ADCC, sir? Um, Man, I mean, a different me than last time, that's for sure. Uh... I was really, really ill prepared last time and just mentally not um, equipped to uh, to do a tournament like that and competing against the caliber of guys that are at that tournament. And now I feel like I, I am. And you know, not to say I'm going to win or, or I'll, you know I'll uh, you know, even do any better than last time, but I'm just much more prepared. I, and I, I truly feel like I finally belong there. You know, last time it was I really didn't feel like I belonged. I really didn't feel like I was that good. Um, and now I feel like I am, you know, and I feel like I'm going to take, uh, a different approach, approach, um, you know, going into worlds, um, then, you know, I do for the trials, um, much different strategy. You can't really get away with the same things. You can get away with the trials and against, you know, these guys in the world. Um, but still I'm going to be incredibly offensive, um, be, um, really well prepared, really, um, really focused. And, uh, and I mean, I think it'll be, um, you know, uh, just just a uh, much much uh, yeah, much better, much better to watch, a uh, much better version of me to, to to watch this time for sure. And having said that, what would a win at ADCC mean to you? And I mean, uh, a single win uh, would just mean everything to me. It's incredible um, to like win the whole thing would just be obviously life changing. Um, but it would just be, um, and just, just, just any level of success at that time it would just be such like, just retribution for me, from, like just getting my ass kicked last time, 
and you know feeling like like I said feeling like a failure to going in this time and and letting it fly and and uh, improving myself that I do actually I I am I think I think I'm starting to prove that I'm, I'm a, I still have a ways to go but I, I'm I'm starting to prove that I'm I'm an elite uh, grappler and I'm, and I'm very possibly one of the best in the world um, and you know um, I it would just be like I said it would be kind of like a manifestation of, of like all the just the hard work like all the years that I've put in this all the failure that I've had and, and uh, you know that so, you know, one step forward, two steps back that I've taken over the years, you know, um, it was, you know, it's finally like, you know, I'm, just, I'm heading in the right direction, I think, you know, and it's, and it's, it's cool. So I will take whatever happens, happens, you know, I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be the best possible version of myself. But, and, um, you know, if, uh, if I were to have success at, at this tournament, I, I think it would really prove a lot. Of my I would agree with you. And I would tell you just as a hint uh, from friend to friend, I feel like if you can tap into what you had at trials, you may be able to overcome even more. You know, everything is like a new learning block. You, you get those extra experience points. So you've learned how to take some of those things where when you say, hey, you know, win at ADCC would be great. Um, you know, it would mean a lot. You'd get to avenge something that's happened in the past. What we've seen with distance and time to a lot of events in your life, you've been able to get further than you probably could have without them. So I feel like those things may be the fuel that give us uh, an even more exciting Keith Kikorian. And know now you're at a good space mentally that the pressure isn't for anybody else. It's, it's you, but it can be a good pressure and it can really make you do exceptional things. So I think that's what we're we're most excited for. And to be somebody who uh, has earned that right, I think is pretty dope. So I'm very much looking forward to it, as I am with a couple other things, because even today, as we're doing this interview, I see a photo, and I'm glad I saw it, because I wouldn't have known otherwise, that you're going to be competing at Combat Jiu-Jitsu uh, on June 5th. So how did that come together, especially when you're like, hey, guys, um, this is cool. Can I have a minute? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, I mean, um, first off, thanks for the kind words, man. I really appreciate that. And I appreciate all the support you've given me, uh, since I was like a literal child. So, um, <laughs> uh, so thank you for that. Um, and B, yeah, like, uh, um, the CJJ thing, I, I knew about it, um, well in advance because Eddie had announced it on the 10 WO. We're doing a 155 CJJ. I assumed I was going to have to do the qualifiers. I was actually told I was going to have to do the qualifiers by Eddie, um, and which is fine. I'm totally, totally fine with doing that. Um, I, you know, I think uh, I never want to be the guy that's like above, um, you know, certain things, right? Um, and uh, I was going to do them, but then he hit me up and he was like, "Hey, man, I decided I'm going to give you the the chance to become a, a double champion in combat jiu-jitsu. It's something that only." No one in the no one no no male has done. Bianca St. Marie's is the only person to have a double combat jiu-jitsu title uh, or two weight combat jiu-jitsu title. Um, yeah, like two different weights. Um, uh, and man, it, you know, it would it would just uh, he you know he, he sounded um, it was just an honor to, to receive like that kind of like a uh, um, uh, like a, a validation. Confidence. I guess yeah, confidence that he believes in me uh, enough to do that. It's something that no one's ever done before. No no guy has ever done before. Um, so man, so I was really excited, but you know, I knew I was going to have to do trials first, you know, and then, um, and then focus on that. And, you know, he gave me congratulations, you know, and he said, he said, go kill it at ADCC. And I was like, yeah, absolutely, man. But you know, first up, we got that second, uh, CJJ title to bring back the 10th planet. And he was really excited about that. Um, and then just, uh, you know, now we announced it today. Um, and it looks like there's some really good guys in it. Um, I have the Ashley Williams match a couple weeks before in the UK, and then two weeks later, yeah, like I said, it's a CJJ um, tournament. So, like, hopefully, I can replicate the same magic that I um, kind of uh, like uh, uh, created with the combined like who's number one trials um, uh, thing um, uh, with like a grapple fest match against Ashley, and then the CJJ tournament. Hopefully, that's hopefully it works out like that. That'll be that will be. Um, I think that'll be really special, and um, maybe I'd have some sort of formula. 
uh, at that point, you know, that I could use going forward. Like, I'm only going to compete uh, uh, within, you know, a few two weeks of each other. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm really excited about that, man. And I just think it's it's just it's it's really important matches and it's important events and like stuff to get me excited and get me focused and um, you know challenge me and um, man and, and uh, man, I just you know, I mean. I could easily sit out and kind of ride this this trials win for a little longer, but that's just like never how I've been, man. I I always am craving like like um, you know more uh, just like uh, just more more for myself. Like I you know if I have accomplish one thing, then I have to move past it and I have to uh, to work to, uh, to to do something else to um, you know uh, keep pushing, you know, and like and, and reach that like higher uh, like version of myself, you know, so. I'm excited to do that, and uh, man, I'm just I'm I'm just super amped. It's gonna be it's gonna be really cool. 2022 is shaping up to be a fantastic year for the Keith Kikorian business. So we <laughs> had a freaking tank after this. Well, <laughs> I mean, listen, dude. It, so you know what's great is it's sort of like if you become an Oscar winner, they always in your obituary say you were an Oscar winner. Here. You know, now you've gotten some cool accomplishments. A year ago, we probably would have never thought you were going to be a combat jiu-jitsu champ. Lo and behold, yeah. here you are. And it's easy to have gotten displaced or discouraged on the results you kept getting. Here you are, forever now, an ADCC trials winner. So those are cool things. They don't happen to everybody. And the people that it does happen to know the work, the dedication, the struggle, and the exact sort of weird ass science it takes and magic on that day. So um, that's why, again, we love all the people who have won and we're interviewing them. It's just, there was something unique and special when I saw you and Tackett together, is I said, I'm glad that they get this at the same time. Like, it's nice to have a buddy who's like been through the same wars you have has yeah. respect for you and is pretty universally liked as well in the community. So even yeah. if sometimes you can't no, see it for yourself, I'm pretty sure you can be like, Oh, it's William Tackett. He's a good, I like him too. It's like yeah. people feel that exact so good, same yeah. way about you that they feel for him. So for sure. I think that's uh that's a special thing. So um very much happy for, for you and, and the folks that won as well. Yeah. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was gutted because, you know, PJ and Andy were really like, you know, we were really like close in that bracket. And my buddy Chris Wojcik too. You don't really know him uh, yeah, too yeah. too well. I think they will now. But like, there's so many of my friends in that bracket. But then, you know, we're watching Will win. It's just you gotta you gotta feel good for him. Like, he's just he's such a good person. He lives. He like you know he does everything right. And and even still, you know, he comes up short. Just I feel like 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 myself. Um. Uh. And you know, it's just I, I was I was happy to see him. And, uh, when, and, and, you know, could you imagine a, a, a more deserving person, you know, someone as talented as him? Um, you know, uh, he's just, yeah, he's, he's a hard worker and he's, in, like, very, very good. So, yeah, it was good, good to see that. And I'm also glad you brought up PJ because I think one of the things that I tweeted out about PJ was look at the amount of consistency he has put out. Like, know, right? there is something to be truly admired about his fight that he has the fact that you look around you're like dude i can i can name on two hands the amount of years i have seen very very impressive and wonderful uh pj barge performances so yeah yeah body of work is really impressive man but i felt like it's not just holding the standard i think that's what i said as i go he's held a standard of excellence in 10th planet for a very long time. And I think that having those representatives means something for affiliations and they're going to mean things for years beyond when he is on the competition circuit. So um, that was something that I observed. And I noticed again, true to his character, the minute after he didn't get the result he wanted, he was like obviously gutted, but I could not be happier for Keith. So that is the the true sign of a remarkable friend, training partner, confidant. And I know that a lot of his performance also lived in through your performances from the weekend. So I think it's, it's mutually beneficial uh, for both of you guys and nobody ever sleeps on PJ. I, I still suspect 
especially as crazy as these categories are going to get, if injuries happen. Oh, dude, I, I, I guarantee you he's going to make it in. I just, I don't know that for a fact, but I, I guarantee you. You have that feel, and I. There have been rumblings yeah, that he yeah. is the alternate on tap, and I think a division yeah. with him would be well served because yeah. uh, he is he's always fun to watch, and uh, he's. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So give him my best. Although tell him he still owes me an interview. So give him my worst. Now that I think about so, it, I I will. Yes. Now getting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, you know, you start an interview saying, Keith, do you got 50 minutes for me? And it turns into an hour and a half. And obviously I would probably push a little bit harder to be on time. But for you, this was a special moment. I really want to do break it down on multiple fronts. And there is uh, there is a lot of uh, appreciation, of course, for your time. But there's even more appreciation for the work that you did. So congratulations to you, man. I mean it in the most sincerest of forms you truly and I, I don't say this often but you do truly deserve it thanks man I, I appreciate it like i said i appreciate it. all the support you've given me over the years and you put up with me in my best and worst times and um, yeah man it's just you know it's uh you're you're you're, you're a good you're a good um you know you're a good uh host and but you're a good friend too you know and and, uh, and I, I truly like i've always uh appreciated that is it really really uh arrogant that i wanted it to be host before friend because when you were searching for the word i was like it better be host first because i'm a pretty good friend but i'm a really good no i'm just kidding uh keith yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> listen kid i'm gonna uh say goodbye to you off air but thank you so much for your time appreciate you my man thank you man appreciate it just before you go thank you for watching appreciate you watching keith's episode but couple quick reminders. One, if you like what we do here, give us a subscription on our YouTube channel. You can find it at the Grappling Hour. That's what you're watching right now. Check that out. Boom. You subscribe. And just to remind you, in case you don't know where you found us, we are at Grappling Hour on the YouTube as well. That's it. I don't want to waste any more of your time. Much love and respect to y'all. Uh, come back tomorrow. We will have William Tackett on our next interview series. It's been a great day for grappling. We'll see you back on the mats. Perfect.